So here's my gate installed, and as you can see on this front facing one, I've put a small LED, um, painted the body of the LED black. It was a red LED, so what I've done, I've painted the body black and scratched the front the paint off the front of the LED so it looks like a uh, looks like a little red oil lamp sitting on top of the gate and when I activate the gate the lamp goes off tortoise motor Linear gear, round gear, that simulates level crossing gate. LEDs, which direction? This will be underneath the baseboard. And then there'll be another motor operating the second gate. Hi guys, this is just an illustration of how I did it. This is an illustration using MDF, but you need to use plywood ideally. Now, if you cut two pieces of ply, about nine inches square, those two dots represent the points where the crossing gates are going to pivot, which is over here, which is that point there, and the diagonal opposite one there. Now, I use Will's level crossing gate kit. Now, there's nothing to be able to attach to, so I used some square box section plastic and glued it to the end of the gate, then slid them onto the spindle. These are not even glued on. Then slid it onto the spindle and it's just a bit of a snug fit on the carbon fibre spindle. You don't even need to glue them on because they, they shouldn't really move. And then cut the spindle down to the height of that box once, once it's all in situ. Now the reason why you want your second piece of ply is once you've got your holes in the board so you know your exact diagonal centres, spot through onto a second board put the one on top of the other spot through so you got exact same hole centers diagonally on the on the piece of plywood then that can be your gauge your jig so to speak that when you come to put it on your railway track your line you can offer it on 
and get them in the correct position then spot through the hole that you've made in piece of ply spot through both so you got then you got a hole in your baseboard open that hole up slightly bigger maybe two millimeters bigger than what the diameter is of the carbon fiber that the gate is hinging on it doesn't matter if you've got a slightly big hole in the baseboard because you can you couldn't you can cover it up with some trim or you can cover it up with some um, foliage or scatter or whatever so that doesn't really matter then you should be good to go and then underneath I'll show you underneath and you might be able to see that is the piece of ply containing the two uh, mechanisms so all I've done then once it's all complete I've screwed some timber battens down either side of the plywood board for perhaps about 20 mil 20 mil thick three quarters of an inch then that allows you to then from underneath slide the whole thing up from underneath putting your spindles through the holes in your baseboard which is spotted through from your replicate jig and then you can screw the whole thing from underneath so you can put a screw two screws one two either side to screw the whole thing in situ and the idea is have a bit of clearance on the baseboard so it doesn't bind and like i said you can conceal the holes with a bit of scatter or a, um, a fake sort of a foot plate for, for the post, so to speak. So that's how mine is. And mine is just connected through double throw, double pole switch. Powered 5 volts. That's a mobile phone, USB lead, all I did. On the opposite end of the USB cable, cut off the fitting, get you got all your wires, and then activates the gates. Not too much hard work, quite effective, quite a simple and cheap way to do it, just two tortoise motors. And as you're aware, tortoise motors have multiple, they operate on, I think it's 3 to 16 volts. And I've put 5 into those, 5 volts in, and the 5 volts seems to give it just about the correct speed. So... That's about it guys, I hope it's uh, been a little bit helpful.